Hey guys, it's been a while. Welcome back. We're going to be jumping straight back in by talking about more work done by forces. So of course we remember this equation. This is our net force equals our mass times acceleration. So we're going to take a look at an example using it. Um, a four-person bobsled team is pushing a 250 kilogram sled horizontally along an icy track, which is frictionless and has an acceleration of 1.2 meters per second squared. Each person applies an equal force to the sled at an angle of 30 degrees. So let's take a look at this diagram. We've got everything that I just said here, normal force, the force of gravity, the force of your team. And we have this question out of the forces labeled, what force plays the role of making the bobsled accelerate in the x direction, right? And using our Newton's second law equation right here, and looking at our diagram here, we can see the, the force of the team, which is this right here, times the cosine theta, right? Our x component is going to be equal to um, our m times a. So now we can talk about work. Everything you see in these animations here um, is an example of work happening because of forces, albeit this work might be a little bit different than how you usually think of work. Um, so here's an example of how we would use it in physics. Uh, we have Marty, who's rushing through the airport to get to his gate in time to board his plane. He pulls on his suitcase handle with a force of 20 newtons at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to the floor. How much work does Marty do in pulling the suitcase 100 meters? Um, so let's visualize it, right? We've got a free body diagram, right? We've got suitcase with a normal force, the force of gravity and then the force of Marty's pull at 20 newtons. We've got an angle theta of 45 degrees, and then we have, we've got a delta R here, which you might see as uh, delta L, delta D. It's just your change in distance of 100 meters, okay? So we're looking for work. How do we do that? To tackle this, we first need to define it. Um, the net force of um, an object as it enters displacement, as I just said, delta R is called work, W done on the object. So if your force F is constant, then the work it does is defined as this equation right here, W equals um, the force dot delta R, or the force times delta R times cosine theta, um, where your um, F here without the vector sign is the magnitude of your force vector, and the same thing goes for your delta r. And of course, you guys know theta. It's our angle between the force vector and your change in distance. So I mentioned a dot product, which if some of you guys aren't familiar with, I have defined right here. It's called the inner product or the scalar product. And you'll see it, um, whoop, we'll see it right here, the dot product of vector a, uh, with vector b is the magnitude of a and b times cosine theta, all right? Or you can do it here like this as well. So here, um, uh, let's jump back into our prop <laughs> with um, Marty. So now that we understand what the dot product is, we just need to plug in our values, right? So we've got the dot product of your force vector and the delta r. Our force is 20 newtons as defined, or delta r is 100 meters. And we're going to multiply that by the cosine theta, which in this problem is 45 degrees. All right. And then that's broken down right here like that. So the final answer should be our work is going to equal to 1,414 joules. So I know you guys have seen this slide before, but you can pause here and go over this again if you'd like in your own time. And this time I want you to think um, about these with work in mind. So to wrap this video up, let me leave you with a few comments about the concept of work. Firstly, because of um, this cosine in here, um, we want to understand that the value of work can be positive, negative, or zero. So, I mean, you can look of course, we all know what our graph or cosine looks like. It makes logical sense. Um, and then the sign of work, since it does come from the dot product, um, could be positive if the force has a component in the direction of motion. Our work would be zero if the force is perpendicular to the direction of motion. 
and it would be negative if the force has a component opposite to the direction of motion. So that's kind of the big bullet points here. Um, and that'll wrap up today's video, guys. So thanks for watching as always, and I will see you next time.